All right. Shalom, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Yasapa from Zion Law School. It's good to be back, y'all. Uh, let's make it do what it do. Give me one second. Let me see if I can make some adjustments here. Uh, I'm Dr. Yasapa from Zion Law School. Uh, <clears throat> give me one moment. <coughs> All right. Oh, I don't like the way that looks. Give me one second. How's this? So I'm playing around, y'all, taking advice uh, from someone. No, that didn't. All right, that didn't work well. So I got it set up differently. Y'all let me know how it looks. Please. I want to have this on my full screen. Okay, so welcome to the free astro theology course, y'all. Um, I do not like the screen share is too thin. It's not the full screen. It's uh, unfortunate. Let me see if I can hold on. See if this is better. Give me one second, y'all. Maybe it's <laughs> it'll be better this way. Hold on. I think I'm gonna have to get another de another device. Yeah, it's better this way. We'll have to work with it, y'all. Anyway, so welcome. I'm Dr. Yasapa. Uh, this is the free astro theology course, okay? And uh, we're going to continue with Moses, uh, with Joseph, rather. Going to continue on with Joseph. We left off on page, uh, page 109, all right? So we're going to pick up on, on 109. I'm just going to go through the scripture, all right? So if you don't remember what's happening or if you if you missed it, watch the class right before this. I think it's number 43, okay, y'all? So this is coming from page 109 in our textbook, which is Astro Theology of the Old Testament, The Lost Word Regained. I don't know if y'all can see it. Wow, there's a long delay. Hold on. There's a long delay. <clears throat> uh, can y'all see my... Anyway. Let me... Hold on, y'all. I got to check the... Uh... Give me one moment. One second, all right. Yeah, I know it's offensive. Uh, they put in front of us the um, they put in front of us fools and people who have bad character. I'm talking about media. And our people just eat it up. You know, give me one second, y'all. I need to check to make sure that it's uh, live streaming to YouTube and the signal is okay. Mic check, mic check. And our people just eat it up. All right, so we're good. Yeah, that's the screen share is not good at all. Give me one second, y'all. I need to check to make sure. All right, so let me let me go back and try to get the uh, screen share right. Give me one second. All right. So y'all, let me know if it's something that happens with the screen that's not right. Uh, let me know so I can. 
uh, fix it. Give me one second, y'all. I'm disappointed with this. I'm tired. <laughs> tired of it. All right. So let's go back. Give me one moment. One second, y'all. Here we go again. Hmm. Hold on, y'all. I don't see the document on my screen. Assalamu alaikum, Islam to all the Moors. Uh, y'all let me know. Can y'all see my screen? Because on the meeting I'm hosting, I don't see it. All right, maybe this is it. Okay, mic check, mic check. Mic check. Mic check, mic check. Huh. Mic check, mic check. So, oh boy, oh boy. Mic check, mic check. I don't hear anything. Mic check. Oh. Mic check, mic check. All right, hold on. Mic check. Oh man, oh man. Mic check. Mic check. Hmm. I know y'all why it's so difficult to live stream. Mic check, mic check. That is uh, live streaming to YouTube and the signal is okay. Right. Mic check, mic check. No, y'all, why it's so difficult to live stream. All right. So I think I got it. Yeah, I think that's mic it. Mic check, mic check. All right. That is uh, live streaming to YouTube and the signal is okay. So let's pick it up, y'all. Page See, one second. Y'all. All right, so here we go. One moment. All right, yeah. All right, I'm in business. Okay, here we go, y'all. Page 109, uh, Exodus X, X, I, X. So Exodus 29, verse 9. And here's what it reads, y'all. And thou shalt gird them with girdles. Aaron and his sons and put the bonnets on them and the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute. Now, let me make this statement. <clears throat> now, y'all get mad if y'all want to. But those of you who are curious I challenge you, I challenge you to start researching whether or not 
the priesthood is legitimate. Let me say it again. Research if this priesthood is legitimate. Now, I'm not going to tell you how. I've done the initial steps uh, into that. Okay? But I'm, I'm challenging you. If the priesthood is illegitimate, well, that means there should not be a priesthood, right? Which means, which means, y'all, in the context of what we're dealing here with Moses and what this author is talking about, remember the priests, they get the best. They get the best of everything. Right, y'all? Let me say it again. The priest or the priest craft is an elite class. And they get the best of everything off the rip. Or like the, the guy I grew up with, Tony, he used to say off the nipple. <laughs> They get the best of everything off the nipple. What if it is illegitimate? And they put themselves in a position where they get the best of everything off the nipple. All right, y'all? So when we read, we have to be suspicious and curious and just not accept things just because everyone else has accepted it. Okay? I challenge y'all to do that. Now, page 110. Now, isn't it curious? Isn't it curious how this elite class <clears throat> membership to this elite class would flow through a family? If that is not nepotism and elitism, if that's not a prescription for disaster, I don't know what is. What could be worse than that? Think about that, y'all. See, this goes into a lot of other things. Like, for example, monarchs saying they have a God-given right to rule, and then they have a priest class who co-sign, who co-signs their right to rule. Okay? And it's just a scam. Right. They're going to uh, <coughs> what is the What is the expression? They're going to uh, wash each other's back. I don't know if that's the right expression. But y'all know what I'm saying. They just make it up as they go and they support each other, make themselves the authority on the topic, giving you whatever BS reason they want to give you. But it sounds logical and rational right to you. Because they control your education, so they know what you will think is logical and rational. Put it in a religious context for you. Gods, devils, and demons, and then you accept them. Getting the best of everything off the nipple. Why you need to pay. Okay, page 110. The chapter ordains... That the chosen priest, see, chosen from the from Moses' brother, from his brother, the sons of his brother, okay, an elite class. So that the chosen pieces of meat, that, that means that during a famine, during any type of uh, disaster or event that might cause food shortages, suffering, etc. The priest class gets the best and they get served first. Why everybody else is suffering? Now you have to remember, these are elite, rich, wealthy, at worst, living good, living high off the hog. And when a disaster comes, the common people are going to suffer and they'll suffer first and the most with those who are already living large comfortable, etc., they're not going to suffer. 
Y'all see that? Can you see that this is not right? Now listen, y'all. The chapter ordains that the chosen pieces of meat and bread and best, B-E-S-T, of everything, of everything, shall be provided for the priest forever. Now, who's going to make sure that the priest get their cut off the nipple? Who's going to make sure of that? Well, obviously, the king, through his government, they're going to establish the priest craft, the, the priest craft embedded in the government, whether or not you know it or not. But there will be a known or unknown or secret agreement between the government and religion, the priest craft. Where the king says, "You wash my back, and I'll you scratch my back, and I'll scratch yours." And government institutions, y'all know we've seen this in the West. Government institutions will be used to support the priest craft, to legitimize the priest craft in exchange for. The priestcraft legitimizing the government, right? It's God's will that uh, this person be president of the U.S. corporation or of France or of the, it's God's will. God said this and God said that, right, y'all? Or to organize a scheme. Get the preachers, pastors, reverends, imams, etc., to support a pandemic and have all the people get punched in the arm. Justify it by using quote unquote God's word. Or go to Paul, somebody like Paul who says, submit yourselves to the superior authorities. And anybody who does not submit themselves to the superior authority, meaning the government, let's say the U.S. government, is actually going against God. Y'all see how they're scratching each other's back? To your disadvantage, Y'all see that even the New Testament <clears throat> is involved in government. All right? Through Paul, what I just told y'all. All right? What I just uh, reminded you of, brother. I'm, I'm sure all of y'all know that. You, at least you should know it. Okay? Now, let's continue. So this is the unholy relationship, the hidden or secret relationship between religion or the priestcraft and government. Y'all see that? Now you see why these governments have made religion such a big deal. Oh, freedom of religion and, oh, oh y'all see how they played you? That's, that's actually a psychic attack. Oh, in the U.S., you got freedom of religion. They just positioned it as though it's something good for you. Not knowing, you not knowing that it is a Trojan horse to control you. To put parameters around your perception, what you think, what you perceive, and what you understand. To put limitations on you and to get you to do things that go against common sense. Because you're going to do it because God said so. All right, y'all see how they played you? You want to talk about religion, true religion. That's a return to the most high, which means what? Living harmonically with nature. If you claim to be a prophet, well, you sure enough better be able to read 
the starry heavens. If you claim to be a prophet, as the scripture brought out, by looking at the liver of some animal, or by doing anything other, any anything other than reading the starry heaven, then you're out of order. Because divining, right? Being a seer, the prophets are seers. Those who prophesy by looking at or divining a liver, looking at or using anything other than that, what does the scripture say? They, they uh, prophesy falsely, right? They prophesy falsely and they rule. They rule through these false prophecies. I hope y'all understand what I'm trying to get across to you. Okay, so we're going to return to our heritage. We show enough best to learn and master astrology. And when we, did, when we deal with astrology, we're dealing with magnetism and electromagnetism. That's what we're dealing with. How to read it, interpret it, how to harness it, how to use it. Nothing to do with any devils or demons, period. Okay, y'all? So my challenge is clear. Research whether or not the Levitical priesthood is legitimate. And if you like, let me know. But don't go following a priesthood or a group of elites and you don't even know if they're legitimate or if it or if the priestcraft itself is legitimate. You don't know if they just wrote themselves into the book of the law. Do you know that? What if they just wrote Jeremiah 8.8? What if they just wrote themselves in? And you being trusting, you, you gave full faith and credit since birth. You never thought to question anything. You've been taught not to question anything. Otherwise, you're a troublemaker, right? People aren't going to like you. Where else are you going to go? <coughs> Y'all heard? You just accepted it. So now you don't drink the Kool-Aid and you're following a priestcraft who doesn't have your best interest in mind. Now, if they are illegitimate, based upon your research, I'm not going to tell you what I came up with. What are you going to do? What action will you take? If, if you find through your research that the Levitical priesthood is illegitimate. Y'all know if you find that it's illegitimate, that means everything from the beginning that has anything to do with the priesthood, with the Levitical priesthood, y'all know that you can delete it. It's void. Void from the beginning. I just gave you a big hint. I just gave you the direction to take in your research. Now, let's continue. Page 110. In other words, y'all, in other words, go do your research. Do your research. Take your full faith and credit back. Research whether or not the Levitical priesthood is legitimate. Then make an intelligent, informed decision based upon your critical thinking, analytical mind. Okay, y'all, give the full faith of credit, rely on, on the, the Levitical priesthood doctrines. Actually, no, let me, let me say, let me take that back. If you find that the Levitical priesthood as a craft is legitimate, then you can accept it. And now you can start fishing through to see what documents uh, 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 doctrines rather are legitimate and I'll give you a hint on that 
if it's out of harmony with natural law, then you best believe they made it up and wrote it in there, just gave themselves power. Just like Pharaoh and Joseph, they just gave themselves power under the pretense of a dream and interpretation of a dream. Okay, now let's continue. Uh, uh, page 110, next paragraph. The recent famine in Russia offers a good example. A good example of what? Well, a famine and then the priestcraft living well during the famine and the common people suffering and dying. That famine was uh, 1891 and 1892. Y'all can research that yourself. The priest fed and the people starved. Y'all hear that? The government saw to it that the priests were fed. Why? Because they're in bed together. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And the people starved. Now, why would the people starve? Well, because both are living off of you. And thus it is in every priest-ridden country. Now, I've been to countries where the Catholic Church have a lot of power, and those are some of the worst places to go in terms of uh, living conditions and poverty. I know that for a fact. Okay? And I'll tell you all this, y'all. Y'all know in Philippines, at least when I was there, I have no reason to think that this has changed because if it changed, I think I would have heard about it. They don't want the people to use condoms. Now, they have extreme poverty. Y'all have not seen poverty until you go to the Philippines. That's a whole different level of poverty. A whole, you, you cannot even imagine that kind of poverty until you go see it. But then the Catholic Church forbid people to use condoms. They discourage the use of condoms. Can y'all imagine that? So now you're trying to do, you, you know, you're suffering. You're praying to God, hoping God will help you, and you're going to do what God wants you to do. You can't afford to bring another life in the world and then another one and another one. Y'all mm -hmm. living on the street. Barely got a box to sleep on. And I'm, I'm not joking, y'all. I'm not being facetious. I'm telling the truth. But the Catholic Church is telling you don't use a condom. So now you bring these new heirs into the world and you have absolutely no way to support them. The government's not helping you. Nobody is helping you. And y'all on the street. Literally living on the street, sleeping on a box, sleeping on the edge, the bank of a river. And that's considered normal in the Philippines. Nobody, no, no one even feels sorry for them. They got three, four, five, six, seven heirs, all of them sleeping on the street, but they won't use a condom because of their religion. Then also what I experienced uh, in Philippines, you can't get divorced. You can get what's called an annulment. But you cannot get divorced. They give you hell. And it's expensive. Can y'all imagine that? You have two people who get married at 18, 19, 21 years old, 23 years old, or even 30 years old. It doesn't work out. They want to separate, get divorced, go on with their life. Catholic Church says no. 
You cannot do it. So Philippine government, you cannot get divorced. I got a friend. I had a friend who dealt with this issue 20 plus years. Her ex-husband, she and her ex-husband were separated 20 plus years, y'all. 20 plus years. He had already experienced mental illness. He was... I don't know what his mental status is now, but he had a lot of problems and they hadn't seen each other in 20 years or so. Court would not let them get divorced. And she had a new a boyfriend. They wanted to get married. He was a foreigner. You know, they had a child together. They wanted to make a family. They could not. Could not. <laughs> So this type of, and, and, and then of course, of course, what does a government, let's say, what does the U.S. have to do with you getting married, right? See, if you're in that slave frame of mind, you go and you get a license to do something that you don't need a license or a third party involved in at all. Whoever you want to spend your life with, that's your business. You don't need a corporation to give you permission. In other words, they're stealing your birthright and then selling it back to you. And at the same time, putting you in bondage through that document without telling you fraud. Anyway, let's continue, y'all. But this is the dirty, filthy relationship between religion and government how they rob you of your birthright, make you suffer, put together schemes that cause suffering to make you beg them, the government or the church, well, church, you know, the God and the government to save you. Okay? And then once you fall for the trick, They come out looking like heroes and sheroes, and you come off worse, much, much worse than you were before you went in. Completely under their control. And they done robbed you of your birthright. Okay, y'all? Put you in slavery. That, that's the point. They put you in slavery. Through what? Through fraud. The recent famine in Russia offers a good example. The priests fed and the people starved. And thus it is in every priest-ridden country. The priests perpetuate superstition. What's superstition? Y'all go back and look at some of the, look at the, the Levitical priesthood. Look at some of the things that they were doing. For example, one of my favorite things to talk about are the animal sacrifices. Killing all those animals. Animal ain't got nothing to do with, you know, with what you did last night or what you feel ashamed of. Superstition. There, there, there's so much superstition in these religions, whether you are a Hebrew Israelite, a Christian or a Hebrew Israelite Jew, or whether you're just an ordinary garden variety Christian. Y'all full of superstition, full of it. Someone comes talking to you about herbs. I remember back in the day, you couldn't talk about herbs. People would start saying you're a witch back in the 80s and 90s. They start calling you a witch. Or wizard. Huh? Or you, let's say you start talking about uh, the constellations and the zodiac signs. People start calling you a devil, a devil worshiper. But every time you look at your watch, you're dealing with astrology. 
but you're ignorant. You're ignorant and you don't realize that. You don't have any clue on how your watch tells time. You don't know what that's based on. It's based upon the celestial bodies and how they move in relation to one another. Okay? So it's all kind of ridiculous stuff that the priest, let me, let me, let me just read it. The priests perpetuate superstition. This is your religious doctrine that's out of harmony with nature. That's, that is the screening test. The priest's role in the whole thing, in this whole relationship, is to do what? Perpetuate or perpetuate superstition and ignorance. That's why the Catholic Church, during the uh, Renaissance or the medieval times, they were killing off the botanists, the uh, physiologists, uh, the professors who taught anatomy, the professors who taught geometry, the professors who taught law, all the professors. <laughs> <coughs> Anybody caught teaching the sciences was to be dealt with, exterminated. Now, don't take my word for it, y'all. Go check it. <clears throat> Go check it for yourself. And then they use the excuse, well, the Catholic Church thought that they were worshiping the devil. They thought that science was worshiping the devil, you know, studying anatomy, teaching anatomy studying mathematics, geometry, studying geology. They thought this was devil worship. No, that's a lie. They did not think it was devil worship. No, they wanted to destroy Moorish science, Moorish culture, Moorish heritage. They wanted to separate you from nature. So to replace the science, with beliefs that often go against nature. And when you go against nature, nature will communicate with you through corrective actions, which we experience as pain and suffering. Y'all understand? This is the hermetic law of, ca of uh, cause and effect. All right, the pain and suffering feedback. Stop doing that. All right. So <clears throat> the Catholic Church wanted to replace nature and the natural sciences, living in harmony with nature, replace it with religion, religious doctrines. So I'm telling y'all, start examining the Levitical priesthood. Is it one legitimate? If you find that it's illegitimate, you can stop right there. You don't need to know what they're talking about. All of it's void. If you find that it's legitimate, well, now you got to go and sift through the doctrines to see if they're harmonic with nature. Because the Most High's commandments are natural law. I hope y'all, I hope y'all eyes can perceive and ears can hear and understand this information that I'm communicating to you. If you cannot, if you're angry at me, undergoing cognitive dissonance, it simply means that you are still cursed by the historical Jesus Christ figure. The scales or the, the, the chains have not come off of your mind and your eyes and ears have not been recoupled to your mind yet. All right, so don't get mad, just hang in there. Now, the priests perpetuate superstition and ignorance. And with their pretense of being elected by the Almighty. Y'all got that? In other words, they lie. They lie and say, we're 
a priestly class. We've been chosen by the Most High. Therefore, you must listen and do whatever we tell you to do. If you don't, if you don't, we're going to ostracize you or terminate you. That means take your life away. See, they're not playing. Ostracize you, destroy your reputation. Destroy your reputation. That means that your network, people who you know, will start to see you in a very negative way. You're going to lose opportunities. You might lose your kinfolk behind that. I know in the Jehovah's Witness organization, when they ostracize you, all your kinfolk, mother, father, siblings, your heirs, they will totally cut you off, thinking in their mind that they're helping you. But the priestcraft knows that that's a very powerful method of control to keep you from talking. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, oh, hold on, y'all. What happened? To keep you from talking if you find out about the dirt they're doing because you don't want to lose your kinfolk. You don't want to be on the street, right? If things go wrong and for whatever reason, you have to go. Or maybe, maybe your consort is going to go. All right. This is a very powerful control mechanism. Let's keep going. And I like the word that the author uses here. He says pretense. With their pretense of being elected by the almighty. See, y'all, I'm saying go back and check whether or not the Levitical priesthood is legitimate or is it a pretense? Let's bring it closer to you now. How about you research your pastor, your imam, your reverend, your Hebrew Israelite general, moray, moshe, elder, ministerial servant, bishop, cart, whatever titles they're holding. How about you start Researching them. See, are they just putting themselves in front of you? It's just a pretense? Or are they truly elected by the Almighty? Now, how are you going to prove that? Huh? Other than you just need to believe or accept. I hope y'all see that this is sounding <clears throat> sounding ridiculous, right? That person can tell you anything they want to tell you. It's up to you to decide whether or not you want to believe it. That's what it's going to come down to. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. And the confessional. They get you to come in and confess your sins, right? And then they go tell the popo or they go tell other interested parties who can now use that information against you. Y'all see how this is about control, getting you to be, to disarm you, to disarm you, make you defenseless and trusting. And then they go do every dirty thing in the book to harm you and control you. And then smile in your face and pretend to be so holy while they're doing you know what with no Vaseline. All right. And the confessional, you go tell everything you done did. You admit to it all. Okay. And then they go tell or even record you. Rule over body, 
rule over body. Wow. I, you know, I just realized it. So they're they're claiming jurisdiction over your body. This is Unum Sanctum. Rule over your body, jurisdiction over your body, jurisdiction over your S-O-U-L, jurisdiction over your soul. But the soul is not something that separates from you and goes to heaven and hell when your physical body expires. The soul is the S-O-L, which is Latin for the S-U-N son. Okay? For the son, that which is in you that has the same function of the sun, the S-O, the S-U-N sun in the sky that keeps you warm and facilitates life. They're claiming that energy. Y'all hear the priest craft is claiming jurisdiction over your physical body. They claim jurisdiction over the life force within you, the, the soul, S-O-L, which they remix to you, so you'll never catch it, as S-O-U-L. And intellect and your mind. Hmm. Jeremiah uh, V, verse 31. Jeremiah 5, verse 31, quote, unquote. The prophets prophesy falsely. Now here, y'all, like I said before, you know how you can very quickly tell if a, if a prophecy is false? What are they divining? The extreme example, are they divining a liver? Are they divining uh, some device? What's this prophecy based on? That, that's the point. Listen. Listen. The prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule by their means. Did y'all get that? Y'all get that? They're lying in the prophecies and they're using these lies, those lies rather, to rule you. Y'all got that? Jeremiah 8.8, 8. they're using Jeremiah 8.8 8 occurrences to rule you. Yeah, they wrote lies in the Bible, a lot, of lie, a lot of lying prophecies, one of which would be a historical Jesus. But there's a lot, and they use these lies to rule you. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priest bear rule by their means. Now, I, I'm telling y'all, go out and check the legitimacy of the Levitical priesthood and of your religious leader, okay? They bear rule. They rule you by these lies. Don't give them full faith and credit. Y'all see that? They rule you by the lies. Why? Because you give them full faith and credit. Why do you give them full faith and credit? Because they pretended. They come from an institution, a priestcraft that has presented, pretended to be elected, chosen by God. And you accepted it. Because that's all you knew from birth. Right? You're discouraged from thinking critically in terms of religion. Right? You can't question nothing. Okay, and what else, y'all? Through superstition, teaching you these religious doctrines. And all you know is religious doctrine. And ignorance. You don't know anything about natural law or the sciences. You don't know anything about constitutional law. You don't know anything about the hermetic laws. All you know is Jesus Christ uh, died. That's all you know. Oh, I'm so sorry. Man. Let me. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me move this. That's all you know. Jesus Christ died, and Jesus Christ uh, crucified. What else do you know? 
religious people. You know it's true. And what else, y'all? I'm I'm just reading from the par <coughs> from the paragraph above. That's all I'm doing. And what else? And the confessional that get you to trust them, somebody you can talk to. But that's a trap too. And and what? They claim jurisdiction over your body, over your life force, and your intellect. Now remember, Christianity is commerce. Y'all remember that Christianity is commerce. All right? So they're claiming jurisdiction over you. So let's continue, y'all. I, I, there's a comment I want to make about jurisdiction, but I don't. I don't have my thought. Um, I'll come back to it. So uh, anyway, Jeremiah X X I X, verse nine. Jeremiah twenty nine, verse nine. Quote unquote. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not seen them, saith the Lord. Now, remember, we learned earlier that the Lord, that the Lord is astrology. Y'all remember that? We went through that a couple classes ago. The lost word of God is astrology. Okay, St. John 1, St. John I. Verse one, St. John one, verse one, quote unquote, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Now, now y'all already know that this word God is an injected word. You, you're better off to delete it. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. <laughs> God is a modern spelling of Odin and Wooden. Okay, it's an injected word, and that that is a uh, 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 a medieval times uh, Germanic deity. Okay, so in the beginning was the word. And the word was, let me replace it, divine. Okay, or you can just strike it out. Okay, because there is no external God. And this is definitely not the creator of the boundless universe who you have been conditioned to believe it is. It is not. Okay. Number two. So St. John Chapter one, verse two, the same was in the beginning with God. Three, all things were made by him. This is this, this, this is this God, capital G-O-D, an injected word. And without him was not anything made that was made. Wait a minute, y'all. Without him, not anything was made that was made. Why would they write that so confusingly? What is it saying here? Well, some things were not made. They just always were. Let me, re let me, let me read it again. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 3. All things were made by him. And without him... Wait, wait, let me go back. I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong place. Oh, yeah. And without him was not anything made that was made. All right, y'all. Do, do you think they wrote that in such a convoluted, confusing way without the intent of it being confusing? Okay. Now let's continue. 
verse 4. In him was life. Listen, y'all, here's the key. In him was life. You're thinking Jesus, right? You're thinking Jesus. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Now, remember, Jesus is the son of God. Okay? So the son, S-O-N, is the S-U-N. So in him and the son and the father are one. The same orb, the disc in the sky that transitions day to night and night to day. Okay, y'all? Jesus is the risen son, right? Now listen, here's the point. In him, in the S-U-N son, was life. Without the sun rising every day, without it being your risen savior, well, there's no life. Life cannot exist on planet Earth. Impossible. Without the S-U-N sun's heat, its warmth, its regenerative capacity. This is your soul in your body. Your S-O-L that was remixed by the Catholic Church into S-O-U-L. In the disk, the orb in the sky was life. And the life was the light of men. So the sun comes out, now you can see. That life, the S-U-N sun, was the light of men. The sun rays come to the earth. The sunshine comes to the earth. We can see. It was the light of men. Now, when you can see, you can observe. Okay, you can use your eyes. Okay? Light is also what? Wisdom, knowledge and wisdom. Everybody see this? And the light shineth in darkness. Oh, right. Well, nighttime is ending. The sun is shining. So the light is shining in darkness. The sun or the day is transitioning from night unto day. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, we go from sunrise to sunset. So the, the daylight to the night, okay? Daylight to night. Now, light represents what? Wisdom, knowledge, also what? Higher self. Higher self. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. The highest principles in the universe. And the darkness represents what? Lower self. The winter months. The cold months where you got to struggle or even fight or kill to survive. So now listen. And the light shineth in darkness. So the higher self man or man with the womb woman goes into the company of lower self people. Now the light is shining in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. And these lower self people don't acknowledge or respect that higher self person this light shining in front of them. In fact, they can't stand you, right? All that bright light shining in your face, all you know is lower self stuff, lying, cheating, deceiving, tricking people. Now here comes, here comes a higher self person. You get scared, nervous. Why? Because they might tell. In your mind, you're afraid they might tell your schemes. You might get busted. Okay? And have to pay the cost. So the light comprehended it not. Y'all see it? Let's look at it a different way. The higher self person goes into the company of darker self people, of lower self people, dark, right? Higher self, man or woman, in the company of dealing with a lower self person. Let's call the higher self person the Christ. And the Christ 
is dealing with you based upon love, truth, freedom, and justice. Talking to you about the Most High's commandments, natural law, including astronomy slash astrology, magnetism, electromagnetism, geometry, the science of numbers, zero. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> All the natural sciences. But the darker self, the lower self person, rather, don't want to hear it. They're getting tired of you. So what do they do? They stop listening to you. They block you out. Or even do what? Maybe the envy and jealousy sets in. Okay? Or maybe, maybe they start to see you as being someone who's going to steal their attention. And you're going to become the center of attention. And not them. I'm talking about a narcissist, right? And so they start doing all of the things that narcissists do, talking about you behind your back, claiming that they're a prophet and that you're evil, right? You're a traitor, you're whatever, whatever negative stuff. They start recruiting other people. They call them flying monkeys. They get them from the Wizard of Oz, the Neanderthal. Start recruiting these flying monkeys to go trash you. And they're behind the curtain, the puppet master, orchestrating orchestrating the destruction of your reputation while making themselves appear to be innocent and such a good, outstanding, upstanding person, man or woman. But they're secretly trying to destroy you, using people to destroy you. Okay, common, common tactics that these people who are high on the narcissistic spectrum will do to you. So what do they do? They hate you. They block you out. They try to destroy you. Okay, destroy your reputation. In other words, they kill the Christ in their mind, in the skull place. They kill the Christ. The Christ is you. The summer solstice, the higher self, they killed the Christ. That's skull place. Y'all see it? Now, let's go back to the text. <clears throat> the sun and light are life. And the light of its testimony, listen, y'all. And the light of its testimony. It's the light of the sun's testimony. What well, what's that? Well, we see the role the sun plays in nature, how it facilitates life, how we can't live without it. It's our risen savior. We see the role that the sun plays in terms of our becoming educated, knowledgeable, and wise, our ability to do science, create technology, and make products and services from that technology. The S-U-N sun and light are life. And the light of its testimony is hidden to ignorance. Y'all see that? Hidden to ignorance. Oh, astrology, that's of the devil. Oh, mathematics and medicine, herbology, that's of the devil. Who's doing this to you? The priestcraft. How are they doing it? Public education, church, the schools and churches, synagogues, temples, mosques. The light of its testimony is hidden to ignorance. What ignorance? Well, the priestcraft's role is to perpetuate superstition and ignorance. The priestcraft's role is to perpetuate superstition and ignorance. The light of its testimony is hidden by the priestcraft to ignorance and superstition as its light is to us in the nighttime. 
okay? So at night, depending on where you're at, you cannot see unless you got street lights on, right? Very dark. You can't see. In fact, if you're in a forest, you might get attacked and eaten by a wild animal. Why? Because the light is hidden. If you're in the north, the, you know, it's, it's dark outside. You can't see. The light is hidden. Okay, y'all? This is, I hope everyone can understand what, uh, what the author is communicating here and what these verses mean in John chapter 1. From everlasting to everlasting, God's word. Remember, God is Odin and Wooden, the modern spelling. It is an injected word. It's not an ancient word. They put that word in there. All right? From everlasting to everlasting, God's word or testimony. So this would be what? This would be the sun, the S-U-N, sun. Now, let's go back to the hermetic laws. The first hermetic law, all is mine. All is mine. Mine is thought, awareness, right? Intelligence. Consciousness, y'all. Consciousness. So what is this telling us here? What is this telling us? Let me, let me do it again. From everlasting to everlasting, God's word or testimony has been written down in lies of light and shall never fail. What is this telling us? The other six hermetic laws emanate or are derived from the first, which is all is mind, thought, consciousness, intelligence, all awareness, all consciousness, all awareness. Are y'all seeing it? Do y'all see it? So God's word, no, not God's word. We're dealing with the hermetic laws, consciousness, consciousness. And these thought vibrations, this intelligence, awareness, all of that, they're all vibrating and they precipitate or it precipitates into us, into SUNs, into stars, into planets, into all the physical things that we know about and that we don't know about. We're dealing with consciousness, not an external God. That's my point. Y'all can apply the hermetic laws to this. Okay? From everlasting to everlasting, we, the autochthonous Moors, have never been subject to birth, are not subject to death. Right? Why? Because we are thought made manifest from the soil. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Consciousness, right? We're talking about the first hermetic law. Cannot be created or destroyed. It only what? Transforms. Y'all see it? From everlasting to everlasting, God's word or testimony has been written down in the lies of light. So in other words, in other words, all of these stars are emitting energy. Mm -hmm magnetic energy, electromagnetic energy that's embedded with intelligence, with awareness, with consciousness. Y'all see it? Nothing to do with some external God. You can liken it to Wi-Fi. All right? You can liken it to that. That energy has encoded, embedded on it intelligence or messages, rather. <coughs> The same way with our SUN sun, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. They are carrying coded information, data, to which if you're a prophet, a prophet, a seer, et cetera, you can look in this starry heavens and you can read the code. You can download and read the code. 
That's called a prophecy. That's called a seer. Okay, that's called divining. Being able to read and interpret the information, the intelligence embedded in that magnetic energy. All right? Nothing to do with devils and demons. Let's continue. Quote, unquote. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Y'all got that? In other words, return to the Most High. Follow the instructions of our ancient foremothers and forefathers. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Knock. Well, let me go back. Ask and ye shall receive. Y'all see that? Seek and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. That's all that's saying. Return to the principles, lifestyle, culture, and take back your inheritance. All of these things that were given to us by our ancient foremothers and forefathers. Ask for it back. Nationalize. Right? Nationalize and engage in nationalizing or nationalization activities. This is what this is saying to you. Return to the most high, return to nature. And y'all know, I hope if you've been following my work, all of us must become experts in law, expert linguistic in linguistics, experts in geometry all right experts in all of the sciences this is more science okay you got a whole lifetime a whole lifetime that we get carved out from birth so that means you should be about studying from birth you should be about learning and studying to master nature. And the end product will be a man or a woman or a little bitty heir who's living in harmony with nature, honorable at all, all times and all costs, living the highest principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and, and, has the capacity and the ability and the willingness <coughs> to use his knowledge of the sciences to create technologies, products and services to make his or her life better and also everyone in his or her community. Y'all see that? That's all this is saying. Now let's continue. Note, y'all, for he that dwelleth between the cherubim. Remember, this is the Phoenician Canaanite or Canaanite Phoenician Ta, the last pictograph in the ancient Ibriath script. So y'all see where the two lines intersect? Okay, this is according to uh, the author and others. God dwells where? Where these two lines intersect. Why? Because these are the cherubim. We have went, uh, let, let's say spring, a uh, spring, summer, winter, and fall. Four seasons. The orientation is North America. Clearly defined spring, uh, summer, winter, and fall. So we have over here, Taurus the bull. All right? Over here, Leo, the, so the head of a bull, Leo the lion, the head of a lion. Over here, the head of an eagle, so Scorpio, and then over here, the head of a man, so Aquarius. Ezekiel chapter one, the, <laughs> excuse me, for living creatures, the, the cherubim. So God dwells where? Between the cherubim. And each of these angels or angles
are marking what? The beginning and an end of a season. All right? Y'all see it? For he that dwelleth between the cherubims, quote unquote, hath made his ministers a flame, a flaming fire. Who, who are the ministers? Ministers are servants, right? These are what? The stars, the heavenly bodies. Y'all got it? Y'all got it? These are servants, ministers. He made them a flaming fire. Well, how are they serving? Well, they're communicating magnetic energy. Just how that works, I don't know. I don't know how electricity works, but I, I use it. I don't know how Wi-Fi works, but I use it. I don't say it doesn't exist because I don't know how it works. Psalms X, I X, verse three. Psalms 19, verse three, quote, there is no speech nor language. Okay, so that's words, right? Speech, language, words, linguistics, where their voice is not heard. So in other words, the magnetic energy reaches everywhere. Wherever speech or language is, is going on. Okay, so maybe the animals or insects, they have their own way of communicating language, right? And speech. Every part of the earth is receiving this magnetic energy energy verse four their line so line ray wave their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world or to the end of the universe y'all see that so this the sun the sunlight the the light or energy coming from the stars are all embedded all encoded with intelligence and information so for the wise who can catch it harness it interpret it and use it then you're telling what you are a true prophet a true seer okay in them that is in these rays of energy in these lines in these rays of energy, in these lines, in them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Those are the 12 zodiac signs. Y'all see that? Now I'm going through this, y'all, so y'all can see this in the scripture with thine own eyes. Page 111. If you would read more of prophets and priests, mediums and magnetism, Curing by the laying on of the hands. Now, I know my buddy from college, I told y'all before, my buddy from college, Doug, did this using Reiki. Doug was a straight up scientific thinking person. <laughs> Doug was a, uh, I guess you could call a guy like uh, Doug, a goofball, a nerd at that time. He was a straight up science guy. Walk, he, he used to, this is before laptops, he would walk around with his Apple computer in his backpack. <laughs> <clears throat> Kid you not. And he was into visualization, uh, visualization programming way back when I was in college. That's a long time ago. All right. You will find the books of Moses, Isaiah, the New Testament, the Apocrypha, full of such matters. <clears throat> You're going to find it full of astrology. Accounts of miraculous things, all of which have long been ceased to be miracles, to this age of science. and In other words, science, the, the modern science in 1892 rejected uh, these things as being miracles. But who was it? Wasn't it the ancient uh, Egyptians who are known for using vibration to heal people, y'all? 
Make the connection. Make the connection, all right? You will even find accounts of relics and bones of the sainted ones performing miracles. Just as the claim is today by priest craft. Of these things, I have but little to say. I don't blame him for not, not, not touching on that because people will try to discredit you. They call you a quack, right? Here's his point, and I agree with him 100%. Science and study of natural laws and forces will eventually explain away all mystery, not just religious mysteries, y'all, but mysteries in science, mysteries in the natural world, scientific investigation, and the study of natural laws, okay, will explain everything, period. And astrology will again reign supreme as of old. Why? Because that's what astrology is, is scientific investigation, the study of natural law, and then using that science and natural law to create technologies, meaning products and services. <clears throat> From that which has been shall be. Y'all see that? That's the author's point. From that which has been, that's astrology. It's ancient. Shall be. It's going to come back. Okay? It will be proven. See, no lie will live forever. That's his point. That's what that scripture means. There is nothing so perfect. Listen, y'all. There is nothing so perfect as the movement of the S-U-N sun. There's your watch, right? As the movement of the sun and his government of our solar system. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. The sun's government of our solar system. Jesus had 12 apostles. Jesus talked about his father's government, the kingdom. Twelve. Twelve apostles. Twelve zodiac signs. Twelve constellations. Plus one, Jesus is 13. Perfect government. But you've been taught 13 is a wicked, evil number. Friday the 13th, right? But what it really means, what? Perfect government. So if you want to embed perfection, meaning something has been completed, well, 13 is the number. That's called success, completion, done. Under the great author of all things, the what? Um, A-U-M, the sun. Sol, Sol, Um, An. That mean, all of those means the S-U-N sun, the disc in the sky in three different languages, Solomon. Okay, Psalms X, I, X, verse seven. Psalms 19, verse seven, quote unquote. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of nature is perfect, converting the soul, S-O-U-L, converting the S-U-N, the S-O-L, converting your life force to be what? Harmonic with nature. All right, y'all, the law of the Lord, the law of nature, the hermetic laws, the laws of physics, those are lesser laws, right? Et cetera. The law of nature is perfect. Converting the soul. Converting your life force. Your habit, your thinking. Converting the low, lower self, man or woman, into a higher self, man or woman. Assalamu alaikum, Islam to all the Moors. Shalawama, y'all. I'm Dr. Yasafa. Thanks for spending your time with me. I hope y'all learned something. Like and share the video. A lot of y'all haven't subscribed, but y'all coming. 
every time I do a live stream or most of the time I do a live stream. Subscribe to the channel. That's the least you can do. Subscribe to the channel. I need to get the subscriptions up. Why? So that more people can get the information, right? So like and share the information, y'all. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share it on LinkedIn. Share it on YouTube. Okay, share it in private messages to your kinfolk and friends. All right. Thanks, everybody, for supporting my project to write the book of the law in modern English and ancient Ibria, showing uh, the astronomy, the astrology, the hermetic laws, and the constitutional principles. If you haven't supported that project, go ahead and support the project. You can send your donation to my Patreon. Patreon.com backslash Zion Law School or PayPal.me backslash Zion Law School or go to my website, ZionLawSchool.org and then do your donation there. So much appreciation and gratitude for those of you all who are still buying my books. Uh, links to my books are in the area of the video. And y'all buy up the subscription to 101 Ancient Ivory app, okay? That's my streaming course. That's where you're going to get the fundamentals on linguistics, particularly ancient Ivory app. And you're going to see, <laughs> you're going to see how you've been played by the priestcraft in terms of being deceived with meanings and words. All right. Shalom, y'all.